All right, we, we got to talk about this. Okay, guys, look, check it out. Tell me, John, what was the first time that you started to respect submissions? Like, like what made you realize that tapping is what you need to do? Otherwise, it's going to lead to really bad stuff. So I would say initially it started, it was kind of like in phases. In the beginning, just didn't know anything. And it was kind of like, what is this? I'm getting submitted, I'm tapping, I'm getting tapped. And it took a while before I learned to actually apply a tap to somebody. But um, in the beginning, where you just didn't have any skill, no mat knowledge whatsoever. But it wasn't until about four years ago where it was during an application of a submission on a training partner. And it was a scissor sweep with a wizard. I remember this. The training partner had yeah. uh, wrestling well, I know shoes exactly on. the one you're talking about. And it snapped his shin. And it you did. It was basically like a modified. It was a scissor it, takedown. It was a scissor uh, takedown. Connie Basami. Yes. And after that, when that injury happened, it made me feel so concerned and reflective about it that I, I said I have to reevaluate. Number one, how I apply submissions, mat maturity, where I'm at, who I'm doing it with, and also to myself. If I'm in a compromising position and I don't know how to get out, I have to tap reset the position and then study afterwards to figure out where I'm at on the map. But why not, why not just muscle out of it, Eddie? Why not just muscle out of it? Try. Yeah, like all your strength. Just, just, just give it your yourself. best. You're gonna learn through losing. I they, think they say failure is the best teacher. It's no, true. to an extent. You wanna fail on your way out of an orthopedic surgery and do you want to fail on your way out of a re rehabilitation physical therapy program? We're in this game for the long haul. And um, see, that's the difference you, in you every just, other. That's the one thing that makes submission different is we are doing something that you can't just fail, 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 because sometimes failure and keep trying and all having all that kind of like stubbornness is just going to get you hurt. It, it gets you hurt. Um, it makes us different. In every other discipline, think about it. It's it's like no, nah, you just keep trying. Mm, you can, but you need to have an application as to why you're. You should be trying to improve on the technical aspect and that maturity. That's where the trying should occur. It, it shouldn't be. I'm resisting. I can, anybody can do that, and I think to a degree that's fine when you're in an MMA fight, high level competition. And you know, maybe this little edge will get me out. If you're in a street altercation and you have to, yeah, fight you have to. Fight. Fight's a fight. You gotta right? fight. A fight is a fight. When, but we need to be well here. We need to survive here. We need to have the long game here, in terms of preservation and awareness, in order to be successful when we do need this. Okay, and, so and so the biggest one was Connie Basami. You 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 fuck some yeah, kids later. Yeah, after that, one, it was Andrew. After fucked that. up Andrew. <laughs> Name yeah. drop Andrew's right, leg. Sorry. 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 All right, all right, Eddie, I, Eddie, what's your story? Like, when did you respect submissions? I want to say my first attempt in learning, like the failing part, that little acronym is, I want to say my leg, when they, someone, I, wanna, I don't even know, it was like 2004. I didn't even know jujitsu. I came from like wrestling, a little bit of wrestling. So we're on the ground and he gets me in like this straight, like, like ankle lock, I want to say, like this part of his bone yeah. was literally on my calf. Yeah. And he's just like wrenching. And I'm like, all right, nothing's going to happen. And I swear to God, I felt like my calf, like almost like separate. Yes. And it happened so fast and I just tapped. Yeah. And that was my first attempt. Like, wait, I need to figure out what was that? Like, yeah. do I stand on my foot? It, t it put me out for like a week, but then I understood like, hey, that's something I need to you know, understand. Like, so, so this is, brings up this, this crazy subject that is so important. Like, it's like a little kid. He's screwing around and then his dad grabs the belt and whacks him with the belt. Yeah. What is the point of that? It's like, hey boy, I'm gonna whoop you. And when you get whooped, you're never gonna screw up again. You're not right. gonna do what you did wrong. Yeah. So the pain of that submission, you've never forgotten. No, it no. stayed with you. Yeah, even till this it's day. Like your, it's like your dad or your mom whooping your ass. Yeah, so whenever I'm in that position, even, even I still remember like, fucking move, get that, oh, freaking move, get that leg out. So now you know to tap and the ego kind of goes away because you know that the consequences could mean severe. How, how long did it hurt for? Uh, like the say, next day? The next day, like yeah. walking around on it was like, damn, brought me back to I should have tapped or I should have yeah. learned. So, yeah, and that, you know, some I, people learn their lessons and some people don't. Yeah, you know, and right, uh, that was a great analogy, right? Uh, the belt 
but that's physical reinforcement. That's how we learn, right? We don't put our hands over the stove and fire because what's going to happen? We're going to. But we've all been burned before. We've all yeah. been burned, right? So, so this is what I'm talking well, about. As a coach, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in this situation, John. Right? right? No, but, but go ahead. Go ahead. Let me reflect. We don't do that repeated task, right? When oh, oh man, that's the submission. How about this? Before, when I see that flame and I see that fire, as I approach it, I know how to deal with it. I know to put the water in the pot. I know to keep distance. I know to turn on the sparker safely. I am aware, I am one with that element right there because I could play with danger appropriately. Calculated risk. We're not just going over there, putting the pot on the water, turning it on, high heat and boom, we burn ourselves over and over again. We're not learning, we're not progressing forward. Control it's control. Everything is control that we do. Our mind from when we jump onto the mat, to when we warm up, we do our drills, to when we're applying everything is efficiency and control. And with that said, when you have those rights, when, you, when that state of mind is there about control, efficiency, um, how to navigate this dangerous element, we have a higher probability of not getting injured. We can play the long game. And those are very important elements to uh, embody, to have as your commandments, uh, have as your system of being on the map, right? And it's tough because it's not always easy. We have very strong personalities that drive into. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. Right? But see, look, I'm the coach. John. John, check this out. Listen, I'm listening. I got, I got guys with totally different personalities. All kinds of personalities. Some people come in the door and they're like, "You, you literally just drill a submission, choke, guillotine, doesn't matter, Kimura." Yeah. They feel the pain. They go, "Oh, oh, oh, oh that shit's real. I want to tap." But you know what? You got the tough guys. You got the tough guys, and the tough guys, like Mendagas, like Anton, like, dude, there's so many guys. They, they, they feel it, and they're like, no, bro, I've already gone a pretty high level before in other disciplines, and they don't know any other way than to throw themselves in the fire repeatedly mm -hmm. until they learn and they get better. And the thing is, is people need that to learn, but they don't, we just don't want to kill them. So we want to whack them with the belt, but we don't want to decapitate our children to teach them not to steal yeah. the cookies out of the cookie jar. Right, right. right. Those, those are all, it's a balance, but... Because then they can't come back. Then they can't come back. And it, or, or they can come back, but it takes them a year after surgery. After surgery, right. and... But they got to get bit because they don't, res they don't. I didn't respect it either. When I started, my story, well, shoot, guess what? My first submission I was ever in, besides when some Gracie dudes came in and choked me with my t-shirt, so there's that one, but so I didn't know what a submission was, but I started rolling with my coach and he heel hooked me what? and he ripped, it actually didn't pop my knee, it popped my ankle. So it was an outside heel hook or a regular style heel hook right. and he popped my ankle and dude, I was messed up. But you know what Bro, I think, dude, dude, the joints, like the, the knees and the ankles and all that, when you're fresh, I go, you got fresh knees, you got fresh ankles. That means you're like young and you're new and you're strong and you're built yeah. your legs can take something most of the time right. and guess what the first time it rips you you're sore for a week or a few days the next time you're tearing that knee a little bit more you get a meniscus tear then you end up with a weak acl and you a little bit of tearing and then finally you end up with the full-blown tear and you got surgery and you're you're all messed up and now He's as blown up yeah and as i'm getting older i'm like dude that's why my right knee is messed up right now Correct. because if I just twist wrong, I could blow my knee. Like, well, when you're young, that doesn't happen. Your legs, you got fresh legs. You got strong, young, fresh legs. But we, I want to keep those legs in intact. Correct. I want to keep them intact. Right. It's important. I'm okay, bro. <laughs> I know he's okay. It's super important. Keep and it's not, I don't mean to throw ants on him, but it's everyone. It's realizing, you know, Mendagas, Dude, Mendogas is training today. He says he got heel hooked five times before he learned that heel hooks hurt. Why did it take Mendogas five. five times to learn? You know what I'm saying? But maybe you, it was one bad ankle lock. Just one. I, just I, one. I mean, just and one. you, and, and guess what? Right. You are a guy that will tap. Right? Also, too, if you say for that element, five times, maybe you had a highly skilled opponent. 
that had an ability to truly control you and do it slowly each time. So he didn't break your shit didn't on break the first your one. Shit on the first one. But what if you had a guy that just had no regard? Yes. And didn't know exactly. Like you see in competition. And he just wrenched the hell yes. out of it and pop, pop, pop. Now you have surgery and now you're out for a year and a half. And then right. What? You you would learn off that first one. So it has to be. You have to learn to play. Well deal with the fire but those different personalities like Mindogis, he needs to get burnt so, five times before he learns the fire's hot those are personalities that are more at risk you're going to be exposing yourself to more and that's something if you want to accept that that's fine but that also leads you open to where if you don't want to tap guys are going to make you pass out uh whether it's airway or arteries and you don't want that for the long run um you know, and, and it's just, I, I think it's just an element through time and through reinforcement after each training session where you learn, okay, Matt, maturity, staying consistent, uh, being receptive to the instruction, yeah. and being receptive to your self inventory. And your what training partners, too. Training partners. Take care of your training. Partners. Take care of your training. Uh, what training position was I in? Um, did I apply good submission on this opponent? That was kind of wild what I did there at the end. Uh, I could have been more composed here. Each training session will always have something new to provide and you have to take the self inventory on your own to do that to progress forward because at that point look at that guy yeah. not mendagas how many heel hooks did it take to learn that heel hooks hurt only five <laughs> five, <laughs> five. <laughs> now mendagas when they were applied to you were they applied slowly or quickly was it so quickly they tried to hurt me all the time. Oh, <laughs> what? No, what? <laughs> but if it, after the first one, what did you say to yourself? Uh, how did you tried, reflect? I tried to uh, do a poker face. That didn't happen. Yes, yeah. it, it didn't happen. Hey, but, but today, today <laughs> okay, and then, then the easy, second easy. one. What was the second one? And in MMA, I believe heel hooks don't, don't really like. I I believe you can keep going in MMA after right. a heel hook after if you're the, tough. If you're tough, yeah, right. In yeah. those elements where you have to push yourself, <laughs> it depends on the heel hook. It depends on the heel hook. But right. if you got Craig Jones on you, Lucimir <laughs> Paul Harris, if you get Gordon Gary Taunton on you, Ryan Hall, they okay. shatter your leg. Look at BJ yeah. Penn. Right. I was yeah. just watching it last yeah, but night. Turn the wrong way. <laughs> uh, BJ Penn's tough, right? He, 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 he turned the wrong way though. Hey, <laughs> right? But hey, you're caught, you're caught. You're caught. You gotta tap got, at that got, point. You, you're, or you, he's a black belt, whatever degree, and he turned the wrong way. Hey, he's we, Mendogas, some people make mistakes in fights. Ryan Hall's a freak and, he, and the best in the world at doing it. At that. He's so, the best. Anyway. I right now, I don't see anybody else aside from Gary Tonin, Gordon Ryan, Nikki Ryan, the Dan and her death squad, Greg Jones. Uh, Lachlan Giles. Yes. Uh, who else? But there's others. But there's others. Yeah. I'm there's some ten up. planet dudes that are real but good. In terms of like yeah. specializing in those positions, I have Ryan Hall. As yeah. Well. All right. So getting back to the subject, we have to. It's not easy because you could just say just tap, just tap out. Yeah. But that's pe the point is, human beings are naturally we're different and we all respond differently. So some human beings need to be trained to learn it. I say this with experience. Tapping is the best way to do it. But we need to tap. I have to teach someone to tap because they won't tap because they got to get ready for competitions. Even Mendogas knows this. You got to get ready so you got to fight it until you tap, right? Until you get hurt a little bit. Everybody's got to get hurt a little bit before you learn. Except for those few guys that just straight up respect it. But you know the guys that straight up respect it? They're not fighters. Home and doggers. Those guys that just tap all the time, they're not ready to fight. You have to have not fighting. You, you have to have the a guy, healthy balance where you yes. at that point, I'm resisting, I'm resisting, I'm resisting, I'm fighting. I don't know how to get out. I need to figure this out. Tap. What do you say? All right, John said his piece. I want to say... Um, control it and if they don't tap just let them know that they're stuck and they have no we're other talking about training yeah we're talking training. about training mandagas what do you say for training for the heel hooks for, for really any submission because what if somebody grabbed a kimura and just went said i'm not going to tap i don't feel it yet and then you just went full blast and blew his shoulder out yeah i mean i think that the offensive guy is fault all the time he has to control you know this you see good wisdom right here i like that yeah. especially with the lower belt yeah yeah, see that that's that's wise.
from a very tough guy right here who's like, fuck it, let's go. Five times, let's keep going. Five times. All right, anyway. Let's go. Let's do right. it. Anton, tell me. Don't tap. I <laughs> tap if it's going to break. How about that? There you go. That's good advice. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I know this was long, but it's really important subject. Um, if you guys have not watched, Henry Gracie has a great video about how you take care of your training partners. That's super, super important. Taking care of your training partners, learning how to like, if, if the submission is happening, sometimes you have to give a little bit so that they don't blow themselves. And then sometimes you can have a conversation and talk to each other and say, Hey man, I think you got, you know, but then what happens is like, no bro, I'm fine. Just keep going. Let's go at it. And you want to get, you want to go hard. You want to get better guys. Who's that? It's tough. It's tough. But we, it's not easy to just say, just tap. I keep repeating myself, but it's not. We, we, we do have to learn. So it's a balance guys. Just please stay safe. I'm getting older. I'm 42. I got a bum knee now. Yeah. Right now. So just don't break each other's shit. Try to go nice and easy. Try to talk to each other and then hurt them a little bit so they feel it. And then they'll learn to tap. That's all I can say. I still don't truly have an answer. I'll see you guys next time with more great stuff.